Welcome to Just Mind in My Business Media. We hope you're having an amazing day. Broaden the scope of exposure for your business by going beyond the interview. Learn more at www.jmmbmediallc.com or you can email us at jmmbradio at gmail.com. Sales is about helping others and making a difference in their lives. Mark Hunter. I am so happy today to bring to you Kayvon Kay, who has an impressive 20 years of sales experience under his belt. Kayvon is the founder and CEO of the Sales Connection and Play Call. Did I say that right? You said that right. All righty now. <laughs> he is also an international speaker. Kayvon has trained over 20,000 sales representatives across more than 100 countries. His prowess in building multiple seven and eight figure businesses, coupled with his advisory roles for nine figure enterprises, showcases his unparalleled expertise in the sales domain. Wow. I am so impressed with what you're doing. Well, I don't even know where you got that from, but that's awesome. <laughs> Someone's doing something right. Yes, yes. So let's talk about sales because that's like everybody's goal. Yeah. To close that sale. It's it's well, you just I love you just used the big word close. <laughs> I was I was pondering this today. Is where this idea of close, right? I, I feel everyone's always looking for the next best way to close uh, their client or their prospect. And I actually thoroughly believe with all my experience, the first close that has to happen is the close you have with yourself. And what I mean by that is sales is, is literally, it is a transference of energy and connection. I'm gonna say it again. It's a transference of energy and connection. My energy, meaning how I see myself, how I believe in what I'm doing, my conviction, my certainty, my clarity with the energy I bring that day to my client or prospect. And if I'm not energetically connected to myself, there is no way I can be connected to you as my client or my potential uh, uh, prospect, customer, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and thus people think it's some strategy or some crazy trick or a way to handle some objection. And none of that matters. I realize in sales, none of that matters if you don't have the foundation. Mm, yes. So energy, energy, and energy. Energy and connection. Yes, yes. And when we talk about energy and connections, some people you just connect with yeah. right off the bat. It's like the minute you start talking, it's like you can feel yes. the connection. And then there's others that's not so easy to tell. So when you're dealing with a client, a prospect that yeah. you really not getting that connection, how do you yeah. handle that? I there's there's many facets to this. So I, I want to first and say I would always tell people. Take inventory. So the days that you feel like you're not connecting to the prospect, I always ask, say, well, look within first. What's going on that day? How are you feeling? How are you showing up? Now, let's let's suppose you're perfect. Let's suppose every day that isn't the issue and, and it's the outside issue. Then it comes to now it comes to skills and knowledge. And one thing, the best way I can tell this is tell you is this, is there's four different types of people in this world. You can call it personalities, whatever you can call it, whatever you want. And there's all these different tests that really all come down to the four. And the way that I have it in my brain, just to make it easy. And because there's the colors, there's the ENFP, there's so many, it gets confusing. I always look at it as this is you have the CEO type. That's the driver, right? That's the people that are going to lead. They're the ones that are do not have time for BS. They don't have time for you to tell them your sob story. They, they're the ones when you see in person, you better be sharply dressed. You better, when you give them a handshake, you better have conviction behind that handshake or you'll lose them, right? Then you have what I call the life of the parties. Those are the socialites. You start talking numbers, those people, you start talking about systems and that it's going to be, this is exactly what you're going to do. You're going to lose them. You want to sell, you want to capture those people, talk about the dreams, talk about how great they're going to be. Talk about what it's going to look like when they have all the success and all the fame, like they're the life of the party. Then the 
other two, one I call the Mother Teresa's. Now you'll notice something in my voice because I've <laughs> trained my brain. I can't, I can't even think about them without bringing my tone down because the Mother Teresa's are all, all about the cause. They're, they put themselves last. So if I start talking to the Mother Teresa's about how great they're going to be and how much money they're going to make, I'm going to lose them. I need to be soft and I need to talk about the impact that they're going to be able to create for themselves and the impact that they're going to be able to create for the communities and their families and what they can do for their legacy. And then we have what I, and I, the worst ones, I call them the worst <laughs> ones. And my business partner is this one. So I can, I think it gives me the right to say it is the engineers. Those are the analytics. Those are the facts. Those are exactly precisely. Those one exact. Uh, yeah. So exactly precisely. They're the ones that you cannot talk about the future because they can't see the future. The future is risky. It's scary. Those ones, you got to be prepared to have facts. You got to be prepared to listen and you can't bring too much energy because their brains actually can't handle it. Like, when you say hi to them, you'll know you're speaking to an engineer. When you say, hey, what's going on? And there's a pause. <laughs> I'm doing great because they go take the information in. It comes in their brain and calculate it. They store it. And then they go, okay, I know what to say now. It's like they're talking. It's like talking to a robot. Wow. Wow. So once you understand and, and people are like, really, Kayvon? It's like, no, really. Like now people will have different types of those personalities, but usually 99% of the time, someone's more dominant on those. And they'll, and you can tell by their career, the way they ask questions, uh, mm -hmm. the way they dress, like depending on the market, your industry you're in, like there's some industries that have more of these types of people than others. So it's not, it's not that hard once you understand it to kind of identify who they are. Now, what's amazing about that is once you identify that, you know how to speak to them, you know how to connect to them. And then you know how to put your barriers up. So for me, I know actually engineers drain me. They drain my brain. They drain my capacity. So I personally can't go into a industry, let's just say me, if I'm personally selling someone where I'm going to be dealing with a lot of engineer mindsets. So for instance, an example of like that is when I first started my career, I was selling to Forex traders, right? And I was doing good, but I wasn't doing great which was, which was weird to me. Cause I always do great. And there was like, so I was just doing good pure on talent and process, but I didn't have that extra oomph that I usually have. And I couldn't figure out why. And, and I remember when my mentor says, okay, well, what are the type of people you're speaking to? Oh, they're analytics, man. They want numbers. They want all this information. It's just like, let me think about it. Let me think about it because they actually have to think about it. It's not actually an excuse. They have to go put it in their Excel sheet, <laughs> look at every which way it's going to fail, think on it for 10 weeks before they make a decision. And that drives me nuts. So it's again, knowing your audience, it's knowing your business. It's not, and you can't do that. Going back to what I said at the beginning, I can't do that if I'm not connected to myself. If I don't know who I am, truly who I am, mentally, spiritually, physically, how I show up in this world, how could I ever expect to actually connect and bring the right energy to my prospect or to my clients or to anywhere in business? Yes, yes. Wow. So it's all about me, yourself. Come it, it, showing up for you. It's not. So I want to make sure people don't miss because you just said it's all about me. And it's not about me in a selfless right. way. It's right. about understanding me so I can connect in a, sorry, in a selfless way to my prospects, sorry, not selfish way. So I always say this is, are you willing to be incredibly selfish today so that you can be incredibly selfless tomorrow? Because you can't give what you don't have. And I can't give you the right energy, the right service, the right product, the right conversation, if I can't have that right one with myself internally. Yes, absolutely. So Self, a lot of people have not grasped that. Which the is, one self. Yes. And yes. I guess that's, that's, you got to do a lot of work, you know, it's, 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 you know, really digging deep, finding out who you yeah. are. Yeah. And knowing your deficiencies, just knowing so much about yourself. So how do you get going with that? Well, now you're talking about, uh, Self-development, I like to call it. Uh, <laughs> I, I always use this because I'll never forget. I had a I had a close colleague who was 
against self-development, just hated the idea of it. So he used to call it development of oneself. <laughs> oh, just the same thing. And how I think how you go about it is first you got to acknowledge it. Mm -hmm. So if you're if you're in denial and you just think I'm great, I'm the best, I have no issues, and you're in this fairy tale that you live this beautiful world and nothing's actually great, you know, bad happening to you. I think. It doesn't matter what book you read. It doesn't matter what, what what conference you go to or whatever, you know, whatever, whatever spiritual guru you 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 try to you know, achieve to. Uh, it's not going to work. I, I think the first thing is acceptance. And that's a hard one. Mm -hmm. and, and some people can accept it quicker in life. Some people, unfortunately, never actually accept it. And they never live a life to their full potential greatness, which to me is my worst fear. So they say, uh, excuse me for language, they say hell on earth. I've never, if you've ever heard it, hell on earth is meeting the person you could have been. Mm. That to me, for the, who I am as an individual is like, it gives me chills every time I even think about it. That is like, that is actually hell on earth to me. So for me, I've accepted that in order to be that best version. See, here's the thing. Most people are not willing to do what it takes yeah. to become the best version of themselves. And what I mean by that is they're not willing to die off of any version of the person that they know that they think they are, that's so comfortable to them so that they can actually rebirth the person they know themselves to be. Well, what does that mean, Kayvon? Well, they're not willing to actually say, no, family, I can't take your trauma anymore. I can't take whatever's you, you've raised me in to believe. Because that ain't working for me. Sorry, friends from high school or friends that I think are my friends that are serving me. I can't be here anymore. I have to go and do me. And going to do me is scary for a lot of people because it's uncertain. It's what about what they think? What about what they, you know, what about this? What about that? Well, you can't have any of that. There comes a moment where you got to stop thinking about everyone else and start thinking about yourself. So that's why I said be incredibly selfish. That's where you have to be incredibly selfish. Mm -hmm. So for me in my journey, I had to give myself that permission, right? There's only one silhouette through the door. Most people are trying to take their friends with them. They're trying <laughs> to pull everyone with them through that silhouette. And the reality is you can't. The door has one silhouette and it's yours. And what happens is you have to get through that. It's the same way of people saying, you got to make that leap. You got to make that leap because so many people sit at the end. They sit at the edge or they sit at this door and they watch everyone else, all their dreams come true. And they sit there and watch it happening, wondering why theirs aren't. And then they become into the worst thing, as you probably know, is the victim. Oh, yeah. it's not me. Oh, it's the world. It's, it's, it goes back to, you got to take responsibility. You got to take self-responsibility, self-accountability, self-acceptance to realize, Hey, there's a lot of me that I have to grow into. There's a lot that I don't know. I always wake up with the, I don't know what I don't know. My vision that I can only see is actually so small compared to what's out there in the world. So I have to be open. I have to be a beacon of acceptance and a beacon of learning and realizing there's no, there's no end state to this world of self-development. You continue to grow and you continue to learn. You continue to fail. But when you fail, you get back up and you keep going. Most people, they try once. They don't even get the failure. They just get to something that feels a little uncomfortable <laughs> and they quit. They quit. And they try to go different places. So you always say the grass is greener on the other side. I don't believe in that. The grass is green on the side you water. And oh, if you keep yes. looking at my side, my side's going to be greener than yours because you ain't watering your side. <laughs> And that's a fact, Kayvon. You ain't never lied. <laughs> no. <laughs> wow. This is so if people want to work with you, how do they do so? Yeah. So if you are a coach, consultant, a service provider, and you want to learn how to build a sales team, how to bring in great sales into your organization, you can connect to me at uh, the salesconnection.com. That's www.thesalesconnection.com. Yes. So a, 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 a CEO comes to you and they need your service. What yeah. is the process? How process first. Yeah. The, the process first is I can't give you a service that if I don't know your problem, just in sales. See, it goes back to most people are trying to sell, sell, sell. They don't even know the problem. Right. So first we got to do it. What we do is like a diagnostic 
And that's us coming in and really seeing what's happening in your business. What do you got currently? What are you looking to go? What do you need? What's not working? What's missing? So then from there, we can actually bring in the right tools, the people, the systems, the process, the skills, the training, the management, all of that properly into the business so that we can manage, recruit, we can train it, uh, you know, for the business owner. So most business owners come to us when they're about to go to scale, when maybe they're trying to get to more than one or two or three sales reps and they didn't get in the business of selling. Like they had the idea of the business, but they find themselves on the phones all day. You come to us, we get you off the phones, we get you back into what made you build the business, which is your greatness. And then we take the entire sales department and we manage it for them. Oh, okay. Wow. That's awesome. Yes. That's all because many people have the vision, but when it comes to that sales part, they don't yeah. feel like dealing with that. You know, they, they don't. And I don't blame them because even me as a sales professional, the hardest thing to sell is yourself. Yes. Because it's the belief. It's all the stuff that goes in your head, right? I even, yeah. me, as a, as, a, as a trained sales person, 20 years, I still struggle with that someday. Still, like, because there's all the stuff that goes in our head. You give me anyone else, anyone else's systems product, I can sell it like there's no other, no problem, <laughs> right? So that's what happens to a lot of business owners. And then some actually can sell, but they just get stuck on the phones. And that's not, they didn't get in the business to be taking calls all day. Yes, right. Exactly. Exactly. Wow. I, this has been amazing. And I've, I've gotten so many great nuggets came on from you. And mainly, you know, yourself, believing in yourself, you know, yeah. doing the work, you know, because at the end of the day, you're not selling a product or a service. You're no, selling you're yourself. Selling, you're selling we, yourself. Yeah. And we hear that all the time. We hear it all the time. by people they like. Yes. Number one lesson I learned uh, when I first started, I went into an interview, young, hot, you know, hot shot, cocky, all that. I went in an interview, <laughs> I'm going to be your best, blah, blah, blah. You've never seen anyone like me. I'm going to work harder. I'm going to outsell. And I remember the owner, he, he sat there so quietly. And, and at that time, you didn't, I didn't have wherewithal, right? Kept going, kept going, kept going. And he wrote this piece of paper. He wrote down on a small piece of paper. He slid it across the desk. He turned it around. I picked it up and I just read it. And it said, people do business with people they like. I looked at him straight in the eye. I dropped the paper. I shot him right up. And I was like, <laughs> okay, I got it. And, you know, sure enough, he hired me because I got that lesson. And I'll never forget that lesson. Yes, yes. And that's very, very important. How you make your, your clients feel. Yeah. You know, if they don't yeah. feel like you genuinely, authentically care about their yeah. situation, their problem, then they're not even going to bother. And so I'll give you another little trick. You have to make them feel seen, mm -hmm. heard, and right. The customer's always right. <laughs> they got to feel seen. They got to feel heard. They got to feel right. And if you can do that you will have success. Wow. And that's some simple things. But hard. But hard. <laughs> but hard. <laughs> if not done right. Yes, yes. So based on your experience, what's the main, it's one of the main mistakes you see salespeople making? Probably the main mistake is, I oh, there's so many mistakes, but I'm going to go and say a couple of things. First is their conviction in their own product. You can't, if you don't believe in your product, you can't, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how good you are. Uh, the greatest salespeople can sell a product they don't believe in and they'll do good. They'll never be great. Mm -hmm. Salespeople that don't have what it takes, they don't, you know, they don't have that natural ability. They don't have the training trying to sell a product they don't believe in. They will fail 100% of the time. So it comes down to actually the question I want to change it to is what is it, what is needed for salespeople to be successful? And it comes down to what I call is the three C's. Absolute, absolute certainty, absolute clarity, and absolute conviction. Now, let's talk about what that means. Certainty. Am I absolutely certain in who I am and what I do and what my product can do to solve your problem? Are you absolutely certain that you know you have a problem and it needs to be fixed? Clarity. I need to be so crystal clear, not just on my product, but crystal clear on your dreams, on where you want to go. 
of what's holding you back and what's going to take you to where you actually want to be, which I call is the promised land. You have to be so clear on what that actually looks like. Because if that's vague, how could you ever possibly invest into something that you don't even know what you're investing into? And with those two C's together, that's what gives you conviction. And conviction sells. I will take a sales rep who has all conviction in the world with zero talent any day over someone who has all the talent, all the training, and no conviction. Because I can't teach conviction, yeah. but I can teach you how to do sales. Wow. This is amazing, Kayvon. We could, I could go on and on with you. You and make then it if sound you're in so commission, easy. So I just want to say this. If you're in commissions, commission breath. Commission breath. You, anybody can feel commission breath where you're sitting there. I got to get the sale. I got to get the sale. It's going in your head out of the questions you ask, the speed, all of that. What happens is when you put yourself first, you end up at the bottom. Mm -hmm. When you put your prospect number one, you end up at the top. Yes. And that's a hard thing to do when you have all that chatter going in between your brain as a salesperson. I need to make the sale. I need to pay the bills. Everyone's looking at me. I got to, it, it's all this pressure that just wrecks the sale. And then sometimes companies make you feel that way because you're constantly, they're constantly looking at numbers, your numbers. Yeah. Well, business is business and numbers don't lie. So that's that's the thing, right? You got you to gotta understand, like sales is an emotional. People think it's emotional. It's emotional in how you sell and how you converse and, con and, and connect. But your relationship to your numbers is an emotion. It, it's, it's, it's what it is. So I tell people this. I always tell my sales team this. Don't celebrate your highs as high as you think you need to. And don't dwindle in your lows. Because what happens is if you, I've seen sales reps, they get so high. I did it. They, whatever goes up must come down. That's just fact. You yeah. never meet, you'll never meet, I don't care. You'll never meet a salesperson that's been number one, the best all his life. No, they go up and down. So what I learned, and I used to be the life of the party, that personality, I used to have this big yo-yo effect, up, down, up, down, up, down. The highs were highs, the lows were lows. And I realized in my career, hey, don't celebrate all the wins. Like, you know, like I just won the Super Bowl, right? And don't dwell on the on the losses. Just stay in this middle pocket of consistency, mm -hmm. of connection, right? Stay creative and you'll have success. Wow. It's not emotional. It shouldn't be emotional. So when 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 the companies are pumping us up emotionally to go do our job, they're doing that because they know that we need to create energy as we go to the workforce. When they say we need numbers, yeah, they need me to drive the numbers. Because if I don't drive the numbers and do my job, the business doesn't move. The business doesn't move. I don't have a job. I don't get paid. Right, right. Right? That, that, yeah. That's not emotional. That's just what it is. <laughs> And I don't think a lot of reps, a lot of sales professionals can't recognize when they're in it. No, they can't. And it goes down to, again, self-development, not recognizing who they are and what they're going through. Because the quicker you can recognize that, the quicker you can fix it. Because the quicker you go, I need help. And there's always a sales manager or a sales trainer out there who's going to try to help you. But if you can't raise your hand to say, I need help, your ego's too big, then you just, what happens is they don't make sales, they don't make sales. And then what we call is they're burnt. So if a sales team comes on, a salesperson comes on my team and in our, in our culture, the word is burnt. If it's like they're burnt, it's done. They got to move on. We can't help them. Wow. They don't believe in the product anymore. They don't believe in the product. They're not going to ask the right questions. The, the, the prospect's going to pick up that energy. It's over. They're burnt. Move on. Let someone else help them fix them. We can't do that anymore here. Wow. So again, Kayvon, how do people connect with you? Yeah, again, if you're if you're if you're liking this and you want to connect more, very simple, the salesconnection.com. The salesconnection.com. Yes, we are definitely gonna to have to do this again. I am yeah, I love energized to. just from this conversation. <laughs> I love it. And well, thank you so much for having me on your show. Absolutely, and definitely we're gonna have you come back. All right, I appreciate it.